In this video, I want to share with you a very recent exchange with a foreman on a construction site. We were hired by this customer to do a framing inspection, and this is the report that we produce. I want to home in on one particular issue, and that's this issue right here. Um, if you'll notice, there's what looks like an upside down T-shaped hole that's cut. This is into the floor system below the stairs that leads to the second floor. And it was obviously cut by the plumber to run these pipes through here. Okay. If you look at the uh, manufacturer's literature, uh, number one, the hole should be circular. And number two, the hole should not be more than six inches in diameter, according to this chart which is issued by the manufacturer. So we called this out. And as we do in every instance, we tell the customer, don't argue with the builder, simply get documentation in writing. This is a structural issue. The written document has to come from the structural engineers. Um, if they agree with us, what there is the repair. If they disagree, they will say so in writing, sign it, stamp it, seal it. Well, this is what we got back from the foreman. Foreman writes, I'd like to take a second and mention that up to this point, we have passed Loudoun County inspections and so on. We have also had all of these county inspectors with decades of experience in their given trades. Why that's relevant, I really don't know. Then he says, now on to the report. All cuts which have been made for material pass-throughs have been independently verified by a structural engineer. Great. And what we're saying is if that's the case, Simply provide us with the engineer's documentation. What did we get? We get a, a diagram, uh, sorry, a, a response finally with photographs, but item 322 is missing. It's not addressed in this document at all. So we went back to the foreman and say, hey, you know, where, what's the deal with item 322? And at this stage, as you can see in these photographs, they started to hang drywall. Okay. So we went back to him, he goes back and finally issues this document again from the engineers. And as we suspected, the engineer wants this floor joist reinforced. So now we have to find, did they reinforce it in the manner um, recommended by the engineers? We need photographic evidence that they follow the engineer's plan for repairing this damage. Fast forward, um, this is not the exact location but this is a similar problem. And you notice there's this piece of wood that's nailed onto the side. This is called an OSB, it's about a half inch thick. This is not what the engineers called for. The engineers called for um, four foot two by four nailed and glued on both sides of where the damage has occurred. Um, the builder was hanging drywall with a repair that does not did not follow the uh, instructions of the engineer. And this is why we recommend you get photographs of any repairs that are done following our inspections. So finally, um, they took it all apart and redid it. And here's a photograph of the finished product. If you look carefully, you will see, this is where the T-shaped cutout is and they've nailed a two by four um, on the side of that joist and they nailed one on the other side, on the other side as well. Okay, so wasted, you know, two and a half, almost three weeks of back and forth when this process should have been very simple from the very beginning. So if, you, if you're if you having a home built, um, we're all human. Uh, foreman can make mistakes, builders can make mistakes, it happens. The important thing is have a third party that's independent, who will identify any concerns that need to be addressed and see to it that it is addressed and documented properly. All right, so this is what we do to help our customers. Um, and uh, hopefully this this was helpful to you. Glenn with prospects. Thank you.